would like to call the meeting to order. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for April 10th, 2013. Any changes to our agenda order? I don't think there are, so let's take up the April 16th agenda. Anything on page one? 9.30, closed session, start city attorney. I think you said you're gonna start uh, trying to get in the major case yes. review. Yes, and uh, we're, we're gonna start with that. We have 60 to 90 minutes of labor. Um, you know, the significant cases we take over various times. It, it really is up to the committee if you wanna start at nine or 9.30. Nine o'clock. I think we should start it at nine, otherwise okay. you'll never get any time to go over the significant cases. Okay, so nine o'clock start. Anything else? Page one, how about page two or three? Page four or five? Mr. Mayor. Do yes, need, um, Vice Mayor. Do we need time certain for 6.1? Should be the first. I think we'll take 6.1 first in the evening since it uh, came off the afternoon agenda anyway, right after the ceremonials because there are a couple ceremonials. I think the agenda language needs to be modified based on what council approved last night because council approved negotiate a whole bunch of things. So now we're just talking about the curfew provisions and authorization to execute. Okay, we could do that. Yeah, I mean, you, they already have the ability to negotiate and, uh, but the, the point, they, there won't be an agreement to sign by then, so authorize city manager to execute. Right, based on the previous authorization that they're already negotiating and are doing that, but really this is about yeah. the curfew provision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, my, only, my only question, Mayor, what is, if the, if the negotiations are still continuing, I don't want to suggest that the, there's no more authority to negotiate. <laughs> or continue negotiations and authorize. Well, I'm concerned about, you know, how people take the agenda language and assume things that aren't necessarily intended. Well, the council approved actions yesterday. Okay, I think negotiate. what we will do is say authorize execution of a ground lease and the one and two, th one, two and three authorize execution and in the, in the staff memo will say that the council authorized negotiation and that's right. ongoing and then this is a separate action. Right, so we're really authorizing the city manager to execute items that have previously been authorized for negotiation. Because I don't want to have the same discussion all over again. This is really a discussion about the curfew. Okay. <laughs> and that'll be heard first. Anything else on page four or five? Page six or seven? Since item 6.1 is to be heard in the evening, it looks like the afternoon agenda is pretty short, but the evening agenda has a potential to be pretty long. Yes. Anything uh, else on 6 or 7? Well, I just might add that 11.2 is likely to have a very high number of speakers. 11.2 um, is the McDonald's drive through Yeah, I'm not sure about the other two. It might be, let's see. It doesn't seem like either one of those two um, have a lot of controversy. It might be best to take those so they don't get stuck having to sit through three hours of uh, public testimony and take 11.2 last. Well, both of those items are District 6. What does the council member think uh, about the, the, the current weights on the agenda is fine with me. Just to take them in order and, and then uh, okay. take them at the end after the 11.2? Correct. Okay. Either way, either way you put it, somebody ends up having to wait. Yep. <laughs> Anything else on page six or seven? Page eight. I have some requests for 
Additions, accommodation to Good Karma Bikes, accommodation to Outstanding Contributor Child Care Awards, uh, Council Member Compost traveled to Long Beach for a League of Cities caucus meeting, and City Auditors travel to Nashville for Local Government Auditors Conference. Any other requests for additions or changes? I would just ask for a clarification on the commendation addition. Uh, is that nighttime or daytime? If uh, someone could check for the uh, line, I, I don't know offhand. The request seems to be for the daytime, and we already have two evening. Yeah, no, I, I don't want it. I'd prefer to have it in the day, actually. So just okay. want to confirm whoever's doing the double checking. All right. Thank you. Because we already have two in the evening, anyway. Motion to approve with the additions as listed. Second. Motion is to approve with the changes as we discussed. A motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, and opposed, that's approved. Let's go to the April 23rd agenda. Anything on page one? I think until you get done with your major cases, we ought to just set it up for nine o'clock, plus we're having a, a lot, we're getting into the heavy labor negotiation season. Okay, and we'll have to have some time for that, so I think we'll just sort of start running at 9 for a while. Anything else on page 1? Page 2 or 3? Page 4 or 5? We were going to discuss, uh, based on the council discussion last night, 3.6. I uh, potentially moving it. Heard from Councilor Roach's office that uh, they'd like to have a further deferral to May 7th for that item. Uh, may I also suggest then that 3.5 move to May 7th since it's also a federal issue? Uh, I think we'll just leave it where it is and get, get done with it since there's a very short agenda on uh, whatever date this is, the 23rd. I would just recommend ha have it heard last that, at that time then. There was some proposed language change too, and we'll, we'll come back to rules with that. But it, the uh, the discussion I've had with uh, Councilmember Roach's office is it, it may be that the council adopt the position, have the option or flexibility to either adopt the position or refer to e the Elections Commission or other appropriate body, uh, but to let the council have that flexibility and not just refer to the Elections Commission. That's three point six. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> On uh, 3.5, the menthol flavored tobacco item, if, if that's last, not before 3? Sure. Do we have enough time? Two stuff three. on the agenda to get to 3 o'clock? I don't Is think so. Not, not, even, not even sure if it's worth putting a time on it, quite frankly. Just let it, let it go. There'll be, there may be discussion on 5.1. Adjustment to parkland fees. I'd say unless there's a reason to have a time specific uh, that someone's requested, I don't think we need to do it. I would just do it so people wouldn't complain about it. Some people have difficulty watching the council meetings online and they don't know that last means after everything else <laughs> or something. So I, let's just say not before 2.30. I'm not touching that one. Saying that that's the way some people have reacted. Any other changes? I have no written requests for changes or additions. Anything else? Motion to approve. Second. Motion is to approve with the modification. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Upcoming study session agendas. I think the next one on the calendar is the 25th. We that is correct. That. Um, we currently have no items pending for that meeting, so we are available to cancel if it's <coughs> the will of the committee. Is there a motion to, to that effect? Which one was that? To April 25th study session, We're just holding. Motion to cancel? Sir. Motion is to drop that item and free up the calendar. Can I check yours first? No. No, I'm just canceling it right now. You're already rebooking <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Okay. Motion is to drop the study session on April 25th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. A little legislative update, state or federal? Nothing from uh, Betsy Shotwell unless we have questions for Betsy. 
meeting schedules, nothing to uh, talk about. Public record, anything public record committee would like to pull for discussion? I have one request, two requests to speak on the public record. Three, one, two, three requests. Uh, Richard McCoy. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, I want to bring to your attention uh, the development of a new uh, encampment for homeless people. Uh, this is uh, located uh, within 500 feet of a valuable uh, population uh, area, including a preschool and a senior mobile home. Uh, the encampment is bordered on Coyote Creek and within 500 feet of the Colonial Mobile Manor Senior Mobile Park, uh, and additionally uh, impact other areas, including Home Depot in the area. Uh, it's been observed that uh, homeless people have been used in some of the facilities at the mobile park, including the showers and uh, potential restrooms. <coughs> and uh, when uh, answered to by one of the uh, residents of the homeowner park, the person jumped the fence and ran back to the area. So it seems like this camp may have been uh, replaced the camp that was originally uh, torn down a couple weeks ago. And uh, since it's in uh, very close proximity to a a mobile home and a uh, school area that we consider to be a potential dangerous to the uh, children and the seniors who would like to see some action taken about this. Thank you. Martha O'Connell. Uh, I went over to this camp about a week ago and took photographs and directly standing in the camp, you can see the kids and you can see the, uh, the playground equipment uh, it's very scary. It's filthy. Uh, they scream and yell at night. There's liquor bottles all over the, uh, all over the ground. Uh, I sent a letter to the police chief. I regret that apparently someone from the police department isn't here. But this it's really irrelevant what council district this is in. I commend the council for their efforts on affordable housing and sensitivity toward the homeless. But we have a situation where we have children and seniors at risk from these folks. And I urge you to, to do whatever you can to get this encampment away from two very vulnerable populations. Thank you. Tammy Larez. Hi. Um, I run both uh, Plain Learn Preschool, Adrian Storage, and Daybreak Recovery Homes here in San Jose. And this encampment is um, our, literally across the street, across the creek from our preschool, where we serve 200 children ages 18 months to kindergarten. And we have observed them uh, going to the bathroom on our property. We have had theft of um, numerous things, uh, usually uh, down to even our dirty laundry being stolen. Um, we've had lots of loitering, uh, especially on the weekends. They're hanging out on our mound in front of there and leaving their trash around, liquor bottles, things like that. Um, drunk arguments are becoming a very, very regular cussing and swearing at each other. Um, you know, we've called the police out on numerous occasions, um, but unfortunately they haven't been able to remove the actual camps. Um, and it has been growing quite a bit. We have a very good view of them from both our properties. Um, we also recently um, called the police and they were arrested on drug use. They were doing drug sales. You could see 15, 20 people a day going in and out of one of the specific areas they were at. And um, that specific tent, um, three of them were arrested, I think it was, and one was told to go elsewhere. Um, but the rest of the camp still remains there, and we're still having lots of problems. I also live on the property with my three children, so um, I hear them all night long, you know, and it does, as somebody who's living right there, make a big concern when I have young children myself also. Um, so I just ask for the safety of our children, our parents, and my staff that you please look into this issue and see if you can have them removed. Thank you. Qu quick question, Mayor. Uh, I'm looking at the Google map. Is it between you and the Home Depot, the creek area? Yeah, that creek right there okay. goes right between the two properties. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Any comments? I'd just like to refer that particular one to the city manager's office for follow-up and uh, note and file the remainder. Second. All right. We have a motion to note and file the public record with a referral to the staff on the homeless encampment issue. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. And then I would just uh, request that the staff report back to us in some fashion on the homeless encampment issue. Very good. Yeah. Either at 
a meeting or info memo, however is easy. <coughs> Boards, commissions, committees, we have nothing to talk about at the moment. We have some requests on the legislation, AB 639, Veterans Housing Homeless Prevention Act. Request to get that on the council agenda. Any questions or discussion? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion is to approve when we turn around to get it on the council agenda support position for AB 639. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? That's approved. Next item is League of California Cities proposed amendments to bylaws. Betsy Shotwell is here to talk about those. Thank you, Mayor, members of the committee. Betsy Shotwell, Director of Intergovernmental Relations. The League of California Cities has asked its membership to review two proposed bylaw changes uh, that are uh, currently uh, established. Uh, the first one has to do with the resolutions process. Uh, and the, the process today is in the memo as well, but in uh, summary, one city or town could submit a resolution to the various uh, processes, uh, the policy committee, general resolutions committee, et cetera, into the full uh, business meeting if they have a resolution that is germane to cities uh, in the state of California. Uh, this resolution proposal is that at least five cities or more would have to sponsor this resolution. Uh, I don't know where the magic number <coughs> came from, but it's, it's implying that if more cities are in uh, support of this, uh, Perhaps there'll be a, uh, you know, a broader consensus of support. Uh, staff's feeling is that if you're a dues-paying member of the League of California Cities, uh, you should have the right as a city to uh, put forward a resolution. It may not be uh, something that the majority feel in time during the process is germane to the city, but there are a number of processes in which these are flushed out. Councilmember. Constant, of course, is fully aware of the process. So that's the recommendation on that one, just to, to leave things as is. And that the cities who, again, are paying dues members um, have this uh, ability uh, to put uh, a resolution forward. This, the second one is a proposal having to do with the Board of Directors meetings during the uh, statewide ballot uh, years when the board is asked to support or oppose a particular piece of legislation. Uh, and the board traditionally takes up those propositions for review that are, again, germane to city uh, services or may affect, good or bad, the, uh, the revenue or finances of a city. So the proposal is currently, I should say currently, the, the majority of the uh, board members there, how they vote will determine whether or not the board and the league takes a position on a measure. The, re the re request or the item to review for possible change is to have two-thirds of the board present uh, support or oppose a measure. Uh, again, you know, I've witnessed this ex experience this throughout the years, and if the majority of the board is so inclined to, to feel one way or another, it's worked. There's been a close vote uh, in 2005, and it was very close. I don't know if this would have changed things or not, but um, it was difficult. But sometimes these are difficult votes that the board has to take, and uh, I don't see it very often, very rarely, but the majority of those board members present should be able to uh, uh, set the direction for the League of California Cities. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. First question is, I'm reading uh, the letter from League of California Cities. For its purpose in submitting a first proposed amendment is to encourage members to seek concurrence of other cities and city officials. Isn't that what you do when you take it to the group? Yes. <laughs> and that's, there's a, there's a process for that, and it's called seeking concurrence. You gotta get at least half of the votes. And you have to get the membership of the policy committee as well, right, so which implies okay. more than one. Councilor Constant. I have um, no problem with the first one. I, I'm not sure um, if I agree with opposing the second one, quite frankly. I, I, we have a lot of, um, I hate to use the word, guys, diversity of cities that have a lot of different interests. So when the league takes a position, um, I think it's important to have a majority. And w when you look at it, you can have 14 people representing 14 cities take a position that's ne not necessarily in the best interest of a majority of the cities in the state. So I, personally, I prefer the higher. Um, it's my own personal opinion. And having sat through a bunch of those meetings and, and 
quite frankly, as Betsy said, it only affects a few of them, and it affects the controversial ones, and I think that's where we really need to need it. Well, I don't think we should be taking positions when they barely eke out with, uh, um, you know, 14 people. Do the cities ever vote by uh, I any kind of weighted voting? No, no. the National League of Cities does, but it, not the state. And that's where I think the problem can be, too. At least at the, I, I carry our votes for the National League of Cities, and because they're weighted, um, big cities get the representation that they deserve, you know, because we're carrying a voice for a million people. Um, but when you think of, like, a, an issue that's of critical importance to our city, um, we don't get those extra votes. It's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, on one end, it helps us if we have weighted voting, but on the other hand, I think if, because they don't have weighted voting, I think it's important that you at least get past the minimum requirements. What about uh, weighted dues paying? Oh, we get that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We uh, don't get an extra vote for the dues we pay, but we do pay more, of course, by population. By population. Well, we at least ought to be able to propose a, something to be debated based on our dues paying. Right. We're fortunate. We have a lot of our member, our council members on all the different yeah. committees, so we have a good voice because we have active council members right now, but that's not always the case. Other comments on it? Well, I think I agree with Councilman Constant, but the two-thirds one is probably okay, but we definitely ought to be able to submit something for a debate without having to go line up a bunch of other cities, considering that we're the third largest city in the state and uh, our million people outweigh the population of a whole bunch of other cities uh, combined. I just don't think we ought to have to go to that. Okay. Other comments? I have no request to speak on this, right? So you want to make a motion, Councilman Constant? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to make a motion um, that we concur with item one and, but take a approved position on Amendment 2, and oh, that's our recommendation here, and send it to the council on a one-week turnaround. Second. Second. Okay. okay. Thank you. We'll just put it on next week's council agenda. we got time. You say there's time. Yeah. Come on that <laughs> Plenty. It's in the afternoon. <laughs> as long as it's in the afternoon. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's Thank approved. you very much. I think we have nothing to consider on committee agendas and work plans. So that takes us to open government appeals, which we have none that I'm aware of. Open forum would be next, and that would be Martha O'Connell and Richard McCoy. Right. I would just like to share my frustration with certain people in the housing department and ask them to get their foot off the neck of the Mobile Home Advisory Commission. Commissioner Graves, who represents the park owners, requested that they have a simple explanation of a section of the mobile home ordinance, which is in their charge. They're supposed to be making recommendations on the, the ordinance. And he asked for a clarification, and he asked that it be on the agenda, and they wouldn't put it on. And they're failing to respond to my emails in support, even though I represent some of the residents, saying we need this item on the agenda. So they need to stop. Um, trying to control the Mobile Home Commission, especially when a commissioner like Mr. Graves wants uh, a simple answer to a question on a section of the ordinance. So hopefully the city attorney will tell them to stop interfering with the commissioners. They're supposed to have freedom of action to make recommendations. It's clearly in the work plan. Thank you. Richard McCoy. As a veteran, I'd like to speak in favor of uh, AB uh, 639. Uh, veterans need place to live. In the uh, encampments that we've seen located within San Jose Homeless, there's a large percentage of these uh, people who are veterans and do not have a place to go. You go down to the Veterans Center, you hear them talk about not having a place to go. You go to the VA hospital in, in uh, Palo Alto and talk to them, they talk about not having a place to go. Having the veterans taken care of is just as important as having the seniors and the youth taken care of. We owe it to the people. These, these people gave up their lives and offered their time so we could have our time here today. So we should take care of all our veterans. Thank you. That concludes the open forum, concludes our meeting. We're adjourned. <laughs>